Welcome to New York City and my eight square foot desk area, also known as my apartment's entryway hallway. So living in New York City really means you have to take advantage of every single square inch. And you better believe that as a software guy, I was not about to sacrifice any tech due to that limitation. Not to mention, that in this box is the biggest upgrade to this setup that I've had in five years. And a little bit later on, I'm gonna open this and show you what's inside. But for now, I'm just gonna leave it right there as a teaser while we get into talking about some of the stuff that's going on back here. So this desk really is in my entryway hallway. Um, it's pre-finished maple. I made it myself to perfectly fit this space. And even though the space is like eight square feet, the desk is more like six because I have to fit this chair nicely in there. I even went so far as to scribe the rug to the wall. Now, talking tech, if we come down underneath, we see this beautiful box right here. Well, we've got a Windows gaming PC inside this beautiful white meshalicious case. The specs are decidedly mid-tier. Um, we got an Intel Core i3, um, 10, 105, 16 gigs of RAM, one terabyte NVMe SSD, and a RX 6500 XT. Now, one thing I know about software engineers is that we have opinions about peripherals, especially the mouse and keyboard. So my main driver is a full-size Philco Magitouch 2 with Cherry MX Brown switches, just like you saw on my desk tour last year. I love the weight on this thing. It's hefty, it feels, heavy, the keycap font is really simple, and it just has great build quality. As for the mouse, I have a SteelSeries Rival 3 wireless. I've recently switched to wireless from wired, and I've had absolutely no regrets. Now for audio, I've got two headphones, a Sennheiser HD 558 open back variety. I really like the open back style headphones because they're really breathable and comfortable to wear for a long period of time. Then my second set of headphones is a Steel Series Arctis 7P Plus. I use this guy mostly for gaming. It has pretty nice spatial audio and the microphone's pretty good, but the audio quality for music listening isn't great. It's got a pretty weak low end, which is why I generally keep two headphones around. And speaking of gaming or programming or whatever, you need a monitor to do that. So behind me, I've got my tried and true 27 inch Dell Ultra Sharp. It's 2560 by 1440 at 60 Hertz. And monitors are fun and all, but if you haven't replaced your monitor's stand with one of these monitor arms, you are missing out. The one I have is from Vivo and it was about 30 bucks when I bought it. I've had it for years go and get one. But before we open this right up, we'll go through some smaller things really quick. So underneath the desk, I've got this custom shelving unit to store a couple little odds and ends, including my Xbox Elite Series controller. And right below that is this metal drawer. And you just install with a couple screws and it just adds a great amount of extra storage and space that would normally be, be dead space. <sighs> this is the moment that everybody's been waiting for, that I've been waiting for in this box the biggest upgrade to this setup in over five years, and we're gonna crack this thing open. Just like I just saw this thing. In. This is not, this is bad safety advice. Oh, oh. Oh, oh, oh. oh yes, you may have guessed it, but I am replacing my 2015 MacBook Pro with a, ooh, a rose gold M1 MacBook Air. Now I chose this machine over some with the newer M2 chipset MacBooks or even the M1 Pro MacBook Pro, mainly because of the cost performance benefit for really what I need to do, especially because I can always spin up a more powerful machine in the cloud if I need more computational power. The M1 MacBook Air is really all I need. Of course, the best thing about this computer is that it has USB-C, so I only need one cable to supply power, video, and USB. Not to mention that with the final bit of kit here, a KVM switch, I can use the same keyboard and mouse with both my laptop and Windows PC seamlessly. Now you're gonna have to get past the cable management. There really is only so much you can do in a small space. And as we've been talking, you may have noticed some smaller bits of kit underneath the desk or otherwise. So if you have any questions about that, just leave it in the comments and I'll do my best to get back to you. But like I said, anything I mentioned, people are gonna ask about it, so they'll be linked in the description. That's all for now. Thanks for watching. I'm gonna go clean up this enormous mess I made. I would not recommend using a Japanese pole saw to open packages. It's just a huge mess. I'll see you later.